Alrighty. For those of you at home, it's a new day, all right? We make it plain, and we get the, the job done. So no judgment. <laughs> Frank Baker. Do I amuse you, Frank? What's so funny, Frank? Yes, you do amuse me. <laughs> How am I funny? Forget about it. <laughs> you take care of that thing? <laughs> hey, you do it so good. It's <laughs> my favorite movie. Anyway, <laughs> let's go. Um, all right, we're back in section. We were talking about um, Hokies, and we added two more, but we are not final on the BFD stuff, um, and there's a lot of BFD stuff that um, the counselors, uh, mostly Council Bach, has suggested unused funds from Boston Fire Department. So we're going to go to Councilor Lujan's um, suggestions. That changes things a little bit from addressing only departments. Um, we're just trying to get counselors that have to leave early out of the way. Council Flaherty um, had his thing on the floor too. Um, we still haven't figured out where to get the million dollars for Council Flaherty. Just to be clear, we cannot actually take money out of BPS. We can reduce their budget, but we can't tell them what to do with it. Or we can reject their budget. So those are what the two things we can do. We can reduce their budget, but we can't tell them what to do with it because essentially that's like creating line items or amending. Um, so, Madam Chair, one addendum just to, on the car five. We, we don't know the actual dollar amount. We sort of just sort of forecasted a million based on car 10, but based on two, possibly three retirements, that number's going to change. It's going to go down. I just don't know what that number is. And so, if we want an accurate accounting, we probably have to reach out to BFD or uh, Connie, uh, Connie Wong from. I need BFD. that tonight. Okay, I'm on that. Please. Thank you so much. Okay, Councillor um, Bach, you're back just in time. Thank you for joining us. We are going to go to Council Lujan's proposals, and then we're going to go to Council Mejia, and then we go straight into everything suggested for um, BFD, unused funds. Councilor, um, let's just buy. Why can't I find your stuff? Okay. $800,000 um, to build capacity in Office of Returning uh, Citizens coming out of um, BPD overtime. This will be the second to last BPD overtime suggestion, the second one, so an addition, uh, an addition of 1 million, what is it, I'm sorry, $880,000, the 80 coming from uh, Council Braden suggestions two crosswalks for windship. Um, uh, not crosswalks, um, crossing guards. Crossing guards. I'm so sorry. And that um, come that's supposed to be, that's within the police budget anyway. That's where it comes from. The police recruit and train and supervise crossing guards at schools. So um, let's those address that then at this at this time. Um, so it's BPD to BPD, yeah. but. Right? And so um, $80,000 for two crossing guards for worship. Sorry, guys, I don't have my glasses today. Uh, thank you, Council Braden, for the correction. Um, so are we okay with just moving things around BPD to BPD? It's just adding two crossing guards. Let's address that one first. Just $80,000 to additional crossing guards. No. Okay, we're. Yes, fantastic. I got it. Um, and then the other one is the $800,000 suggest suggestion um, to build capacity in the Office of Returning Citizens from Boston Police Department over time to, again, Office of Returning Citizens. Can we, um, if, if you support it already, let me see your hands. Can I ask a question? Uh, yes, sir. One second, sorry. If you support it already, raise your hands. What is it again? One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, oh, seven, eight. Um, and then nine, he's. Yeah, my question is, so if we're, if we're advocating to take money out of them, and I know you probably went through this, and I apologize if I wasn't paying attention at that time, but you, taking money out of the overtime budget, we take it out. If they need it at some point, it still goes in there. So how do you address that? Where, where will that money now, that is overtime money, where's that coming from? Well, I think, I mean, yes, Councilor Lara spoke to that. Oh, you're going to give earlier. me another handout, are you? Councilor Look at all the stuff I got. Councilor Louis Jean, you have the floor. Yes, so, you know, that we are required to pay overtime, but this is also going to be behavior shifting, hopefully, to addressing the issues within um, uh, within BPD. And if, when BPD came here for the hearing, one of the things that they stated. Well, I'm sorry, yeah. Councilor Louis Jean. Councilor Baker and Councilor Lara, um, would you like to address clar any clarifications on the record, please? You all set? I just handed him that out. Yeah, no, I don't. I... Okay. Okay. Councillor Lujan, please. Uh... Yes, as was discussed earlier when we were discussing this with, with respect to youth jobs, um, we are statutorily required to pay for overtime. And so, but what we're hoping to do is do some behavior shifting here. When BPD came before the city council, they said that they continue to put more efficiencies in place to reduce overtime. And that includes increasing the medical triage unit and clinicians to conduct more regular health screenings of officers out on injury leave to get them back to work quickly and involuntarily retiring officers who have been out injured for over two years. So I believe BPD's commitment to reducing overtime. And I believe that we have a role here to support an office that we've created but never really supported. Um, there's a direct connection here to making sure that we are supporting uh, those who are coming home with the resources and building out an office that's partnering with community-based organizations that a lot of us heard from yesterday even, we've been hearing from them a lot, that are doing the work when it comes to housing, when it comes to mental health. And this uh, $800,000 would really help support that, which would reduce recidivism and, uh, and, and offer a soft landing to our folks coming home and to those who are formerly incarcerated. And I know that they were supportive of this program as well as I think that we are at about, let's see, um, six, seven, eight. And I think that there was all, it was also expressed that the limit of, of shifting money from overtime was 10 million. Like, uh, yep. please do not exceed 10 million, that we are flexible and okay with 10 million. So at, at this point, yeah, we're- that BPD said that, they were flexible in 10 million? This is- I think these are conversations, conversations. that folks have had about what we could potentially be comfortable with when it comes to considering how egregious it has been that we have consistently getting this wrong on the issue of overtime. And so we are also trying to with this send signals of what we want us to be PD do. We're not gonna move on because we, we are now going to move on because we've reached nine. Um, the next thing for Councillor Lujen is programmatic support to Moya for the, sorry, programmatic support for Citizenship Day to Moya in the amount of $100,000 from Central Fleet. Can you raise your hand if you support this? Can you say it again? So programmatic support for Citizenship Day to go to Moya Mayor's Office of Immigrant Advancement in the amount of $100,000 from Central Fleet. Raise I think, your hand. Oh. Raise your hand if you support this. When okay. you say Central Fleet, what do you mean? Like we're in Central Fleet, we're not gonna buy toll. Yes. So Central Fleet is public works, is there, is there all of their um, Oh, no, specific to Council Lujan, please respond. For Central Fleet, the entire. So it's from Central Fleet Management. Um, it's so because of the pandemic, we saw they, you know, there was a, there was what was budgeted for FY22 and what's projected, which is going to come mm -hmm. under. And we think that because of, you know, moving towards, uh, forward towards electrification of car of cars, um, there's also deeper partnerships with Madison Park in terms of repairing our vehicles that we could potentially see more cost savings when it comes to uh, maintaining our central So when you say central fleet, you mean all the vehicles in the city, not just public works and, and, and okay, so that well, would the line item, and buying new vehicles. Yeah, the line item is from under streets, cabinet, central fleet management. 
Um, sorry, let me just click on it and make sure I have that typed in. Um, sorry, what is it? So, management? Central Fleet Management. Are we good? Yeah. Thank you. Um, next we have... Thank you, Madam Chair, for taking me out of order. No problem. But you don't have to leave yet. No, I don't. I'll have to leave probably at 3.30. I'm giving the keynote at my middle school. 3.30. So. We're clocking you. Thank you. Um, next we have for another BPD. We only got about a million. Uh, we only got about a million to go, guys. So don't get excited. Um, for tree maintenance, urban wilds, project manager, grant to BGWT uh, and tree pruning. Of for the amount of seven hundred and twenty-six thousand to go to parks from parks personnel and environment contractual. This would be, again, in the amount of $726,000 to come from BPD overtime. This is the last million we're doing on this. Show your hands if you support it, please. Um, hmm? OT to, um, sorry, uh, Council Bach, I, I, I have you next. Um. <laughs> OT, uh, parks personnel, and environmental, we got uh, contractual. So we can separate those amounts. Uh, Council Bach, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Madam Chair, uh, it was, I think this is based on the proposal that I filed, is that true? That's true. Right, so I was actually hoping to have that come out of BP, out of a set of specific BPD unspent funds, not BPD overtime line. Okay. Um, BPD correction, BPD unspent funds? Yeah, so specifically, um, it's BPD... Uh, unspent comms? Their contractual services, their comms line 52100, Got it. which um, is way under budget, um, and I think, just for anybody who wasn't at the working session, it appears as though the police must have gotten a cheaper phone contract and not adjusted the line item or something, because it was significantly under last year, and it's running significantly under again this year. Thank you. No problem. Um, can can we separate the amounts for contract and personnel, please? Can you give me those amounts? Oh yeah, sure. So for environment department line um, 303 for contractual services, it was just 37,627. This was just a small adjustment to, sorry. 37. 37,627. Mm -hmm. So this is just a small increase to the annual grant to the Boston Groundwater Trust, which hasn't gone up since 2005. Um, which gets funneled through environment contractual services. And then in the parks personnel line, 5100, the, the permanent employees line, um, the remainder of that sum. Which is our 500,000 and what? Well, so the, the challenge is we changed it in our working session, so the sheet in front of me, I don't have it. So We it's, had a total of, sorry, uh, uh, Councillor, um, we had a total of 726,000, we just deducted 37,627. Can you give me the remainder yep, of that? I can do please? that. Absolutely. 726, did it have small numbers after? No. That? No. Okay. Minus. Oh, that's one sec. My, sorry, my computer's minus. This is one day to leave your computer behind. Um, yeah, so it's 688373. Thank you. Um, can you show your hands if you support this? All set. And next we have from, last but not least, from actual, actually um, from BPDOT. No, oh, sorry, there's two left. Um, we had already discussed 600,000 to blackmail advancement. Same concept, well, not same, but preventative in terms of preventative measures. Um, we had already discussed it and we tabled it. 
Um, and then the next one is parking enforcement, but this, that's, that's BPD to BTD. Yes, uh, Councilor Coletta. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm going to amend, so this is my uh, amendment for mm -hmm. two parking enforcement officers in East Boston. I'm looking at the Transportation Department budget now, and they're actually decreasing their traffic enforcement line item uh, by 1%, but increasing their traffic commissioner's office by 95%. So I'm gonna pull from that. BTD to BTD? BTD, BTD. All right, can we show our hands if you support that? Transportation to transportation, just asking them to prioritize two uh, additional park enforcement in East Boston. Can we, can you raise your hand if you support this? Okay, next one, I just have to specify East Boston. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks everybody. Definitely just East Boston, you're the only one here. Just East Boston, <laughs> people park in our streets to go to the airport. Right, right. Totally different from the rest. Um, back to bla blackmail advancement. Again, that's six hundred thousand dollars to expand resources and blackmail advancement um, from uh, BPD overtime. This is the last suggestion from BPD overtime, which still keeps them under the ten million. Can you please raise your hand if you support it? Sorry? 600,000. Can you raise your hand if you support it to blackmail advancement? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, done. Um, nope, that's it, we're not, we're not doing BPD anymore. God. Um, <laughs> thank you. All right. And next to continue on. All right. Let's find money for Council Flaherty, please. <laughs> it is a million. Okay. Uh, comes under the SAFER grant and can, can be covered for three years and they can renew the SAFER grant. So it's, I guess, budget neutral. But we've got to come up with a million. Council Block, can you please help us out here? It's better than Frankie's deal for 10 million. <laughs> we need a million. <laughs> <laughs> Council Block has millions in the bank. No <laughs> kidding. Which one? Leave the cops alone this time. <laughs> well, Madam Chair, have we uh, have we taken out of fire yet? Nope. I left them for you. Okay. Um, and uh, have we? Um, and I'm sorry if I missed this, but we haven't discussed yet. So I know we just discussed one of the ones that I had. Did we discuss the others? Mm -hmm. We have not. We waited for you. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but what did you guys end up doing on Hokies? Hokies. Um, did you already? We have yeah. not. We tabled it. Okay, we tabled Hokies. Okay. Um, yeah. You might just need to. Well, I mean, look, we could. There's a place to find it. I don't know if you're going to like it, Michael. Yeah. You're um, not going to like it, Michael. Don't touch the cops, or we're in good shape. <laughs> well, cops. I mean,. Yeah, I, I think I think the place to do it would be um, inside of like fire lease purchase is way way down. Um, we talked about this again at the last working session, um, but basically, um, and actually, sorry, my stuff. Oh yeah, can you actually pass these around? That would be great. This is the fire budget. Um, I passed these out at the last working session, but just so that everybody has a copy. Um, so these are stapled, but actually the best thing is if you un if you pull them apart and you put them next to each other. Um, 
So basically what it shows you is kind of uh, what the fire department's approved budget for last year was, how they've moved their allocations around but as of mid-April, and kind of what they've encumbered, what they've expended, their total spent to 4 18 22, um, the total available. Then it gives you a kind of percentage of the amount left. Just for comparison, the benchmark here would be if everything was running totally non-lumpily to budget, it would be at 21%. And then, F and then it shows you their FY23 proposed budget. Um, but basically, uh, what I was highlighting is there's a couple of places where fire is hugely underspending um, its budget, and probably the biggest one and the place to find a million dollars would be in the um, uh, lease purchase line, where they budgeted at 3.6. They've already, in their internal budget, knocked it down another 600000 that they know they're not going to spend, and then their actual expenditure um, up to up through April was 1.2, but even if they kept going on track, you'd expect them to end up with more than $2 million unspent here. And lease purchase is the type of thing where I feel like it shouldn't be that lumpy for this type of thing, because as you know, Councillor Flaherty, this is not apparatus. This is right. like cars and right. stuff, yeah. right? So it's like, unless someone's going on a spending spree in June because they see they've got a bunch of money, right. it seems like they Agreed. really do have more in this line item than they need. So my suggestion would be um, to move, you could move a million out of this up into personnel, permanent employees, 51, uh, Thousand, and then you would still have the 314 um, that I had proposed out of this line for um, Hokies and, and such, and also um, some of the waste reduction work and open streets work. Now, I think we've added some Hokies to that, so I probably would need to combine it with some other proposals. But if I were going to find it within fire, that's where I would go first. Madam Chair. Thank you so much, Councilor Bach. Thank you for the analysis. Yes. So that's not apparatus, that's not trucks and ladders, right. that, that's right. just their smaller vehicles right. and, and it could be like copiers and stuff exactly. like that. Exactly, yeah, and in fact, when you look at the historical spending, so yeah, for folks who look at our capital budget, you'll see that like engines and ladders and stuff are actually capital expenditures that we bond for. Um, if you look back, the bump in this lease purchase spending, I'm pretty sure, was for those washer dryers that Commissioner Finn did, remember, yeah. because of the concern about the carcinogens in everybody's yeah. uniforms. So there was a big bump to pay for those washer dryers in all the stations. And I think what happened, this is conjecture, but, I, but just guessing, it looks like they sort of left it up at that elevated level, but obviously you don't need a new set of washer dryers for every station every year. So I think that might be where the bump is coming from. Appreciate that analysis. I would consider either half or three quarters of that and put the rest with the uh, outside council. That makes a million dollars. Jeez, just solved the world's problems. <laughs> Perfect. What? Thank you, Kenzie. Can, can you, sorry, can you repeat that? I said I would take either half or three quarters of that suggestion added to the outside council that the law department continues to farm out to private expensive law firms, and that's our million. Because I'm not letting the law department Are you suggesting a half of that? No, she, he's suggesting 750 from my place and then another 250 from, from probably correct. contractual services under the right. law. Right. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is that in hey, I didn't have to buy lunch today. <laughs> the 250 from where? From um, uh, law department, uh, so that's up on the first page of the order. Uh, contractual services. I mean, he's proposing a uh, he's proposing a, a ten percent cut to law contractual services. I think it's probably worth saying that this council does continue to be involved in cases which send us to the Supreme Court. <laughs> a thing which Councillor Flaherty knows we do in fact need outside counsel for. <laughs> but I, there's like three in my time on the council. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so it's a $2.4 million line item, Madam Chair, which Can I think we, he's proposing cutting by 250000 Thank you so much. Can we raise our hand if we support it? Yes, Councillor For Flynn. one comment, please. Mm -hmm, of course. And it, it may have... Um, some relevance to the discussion. Um, I know the washers, the washer and, and, and um, wash machine, washing and the drying that the, uh, that the fire departments do, uh, washing, washing the um, fire equipment, jackets and pants. Um, I know that there's tremendous wear and tear on those machines as well. So something to think about that as we go forward, 
we're going to continue to need money in the city budget um, for this expense. So. Yeah, we're still leaving 1.1 million over that in the unspent mm -hmm. in that area. Councilor Arroyo. Uh, so this $250,000 that we're taking from the law department is on top of the 160? No. Oh. On top of the million, no. It's on top of the 750,000. No, no, I know that. I'm saying oh. we already have allocated 160,000 oh, out of. Yes. And so this is 250,000 plus 160,000? Yes. Off of the same line item? We've already taken, yes. Did we take, sorry, did we take the 160 out of personnel in law or out of contractual services in law? Contractual. Contractual, okay. So this is almost 400,000? Yes. Which is, Kenzie, you're, you got the calculator. How much of a percentage is that on that? <laughs> well, it's, it's 400 out of 2.4, so it's like a sixth. Um, well, no, if it was your law department, <laughs> uh, it's um, like 17%. I'll, uh, I'll take away my 80. Delete it. Is it so now it's... Now it's so it's now eighty thousand to three hundred and thirty k. Go back. Um, I'll pull it from BPD o OT if you guys don't mind. It's just eighty thousand. How many are we at for BPD OT? Less than about nine. Off the top of my head, I'm not. I haven't done the actual math. So 80,000 can, we can remove the 160 from, from Not the whole 160, because 80 is for her, her clerk position. Yeah, I know, that's what I'm saying. Like we can, I'm suggesting both. Taking both out of yeah. BPD overtime? Uh, taking, uh, yes, and not law. And that way Mike gets his, his right. goal here of not taking from BPD? Right, exactly. And sticking to the law department apparently. And still sticking to the law department, sure. That works for me. Any hesitation? Can we move forward with this? Raise your hand. That's nine. Let's go. Um, sorry, just want to correct the other law. Okay, moving on, you guys ready? Car five, ladder 13, done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving mo further with uh, Council Bach, would you like to, let me just, let me just get um, Councilor Collette out of the way and then you're, we'll just address your things next. Oh, sorry, Mejia, then Bach. You have, oh great, you're here, good. We don't want anybody to leave anyway. Um, Council Coletta, this is your last one, I think. Um, waterfront czar, to add a waterfront czar, or I think two of them, Council Coletta, please correct me on any specifications, $150,000 to go to parks. We need to help Councilor <laughs> Coletta find this, um, money. Council Coletta, would you like to have the floor to explain more? Yeah, so thank you, Madam Chair. So this would be, for those of you who weren't there during the working session, um, East Boston, uh, East Boston, Charleston, and the North End um, have a significant threat of sea level rise in the next couple of years. So right now there are uh, parallel planning processes that are happening in uh, Charlestown and East Boston. And it's also been made clear that it is a priority from the administration to have a municipal harbor planning process in East Boston in particular. Right now, what is happening is that there are multiple different staff members from different departments who are working on this very issue. There are dozens of advocacy organizations that are going to different people in the administration and the BPDA. So there's not one position it would be the director of waterfront planning or whomever under the uh, the cabinet of energy, uh, sorry, environment, energy, and open space that they could go to, and we could 
sort of have this person lead this process. So I'm uh, proposing $150,000 for this uh, one person to, to lead this charge. Um, I'm open to that number, to changing that number, if folks want to do that. I was actually thinking of pulling it from this BFD lease purchase line item and making that proposal. Does so anyone have any suggestions on the amount or where it's coming from? Is that going to be the amount of what they get paid in a lease? Because the employee that makes 150 actually costs us probably 300 or more. Mm -hmm. So uh, does anybody have a thought on that? Like, should we be budgeting for the whole package there or yeah, is somebody else's problem? And I, what does Richie McGinnis do up in BPDA? He does do uh, waterfront planning, although he is just a staff member of the BPDA. Okay. So I was thinking this would this individual work, would work across departments. Okay. Um, sorry, not across departments, but between the Energy, Environment, and Open Space Cabinet, as well as the BPDA, and bring everybody together and pull this one um, planning process um, together at the end of the day. Okay. Yeah. So if the FTEs, and this should be across the board, if the FTEs are we're talking about paying people whatever we're paying them, are we going to have budget, but we're going to budget for the full package or just what the salary is going to be? I think not that's... To, not to complicate issues, but... That, I mean, that's my question as well. Um, Unless you're going to pay that this. person 65000 and then the rest is their package, but 65000 isn't enough. Yeah. <clears throat> Council Bob? I, I would just say, I think it's a fair question, Councillor Baker. I think that um, I would, I think this is one of the things we need to iron out about this process going forward, but I also yeah. feel like it's a piece of what the administration can sort of process and get back to us on. I mean, you're correct, right, that anything, anybody personnel, you really have to add another 50% to understand what they're costing the city. However, because all those pension and health care costs are included in separate lines, like even for the even the city departments just report salary to us, yeah. and then everybody's pension and health care roll up are in the pension and health care roll ups of these of the like in the separate lines of the order. So I feel like you probably is that in the OPEB line. So so, so it's not OPEB, in, no, it's, OPEB it's, is is old liability. No, but correct? OPEB is yeah, that's old stuff. This is no, this is in if you get if you look in the um, sorry the orders are in the back of the first volume of the book if anybody wants them. Um, there's a line for healthcare. I'm just trying to find it. I'll find it in a second. But basically, there's a line for um, healthcare pension costs. And so I feel like, as the chair has referenced several times, as this process like matures in the future and we both have budget staff and whatever, it seems like it would make sense for the administration to come up with some kind of prorated number and for the council to know that and for personnel changes to have that baked in. But I feel like we're not, we haven't done that with any of the personnel that anybody's yeah. recommended, and it's not really how the administration presents their own personnel numbers. So it feels like what makes sense is to just throw this across the fence <coughs> with the number of what you're actually going to pay them. Personally, yeah. I think it's closer to 125 than 150, but that's just a comment. Um, and then and then have them kind of come back to us with that conversation. Fair enough. So we're, we're consistent in right. just um, salary. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And stick somebody else with the other bill, Kenzie? And figure out a way forward for a systemic approach. To the I like the way you said that. <clears throat> I think there's been a lot of talk about signaling to the administration. This would be a one one signal. Thank you. Yes, Councilor. Their Office of Human Resources. Don't kill me. Is having a 21 21 percent increase as well um, of 1.3 million. <laughs> I saw the reasoning for it, so additional staff to promote updated human services functions, yes, and then there's the secondary line that's funding for employee transportation options. That I don't know what that means, uh, and I should I could have asked on Monday, but I didn't. And I'm wondering if anybody here has the answer to that, what that means, and if it would suffer from a $150,000 cut. It's in the... Um, The, we got this report from the administration of things that had more than a 10% increase, and it's on the third page. That's you. At the top of the third page. What is your suggestion? 
my suggestion, I, I, I want to suggest that we get the $150,000 from there, but I don't know what funding for employee transportation options are, and I don't want to cut into it if it's going to have a negative, like an adverse impact. Like if it, if it could, if it, it would be fine with $150,000 less, then I would suggest it from there, but I'm not, I, mostly the question is for the council, if anybody knows. Uh, if not, then I will remove my suggestion. The increase is only $56,000. Okay, thank you. Um, I mean, it's $150,000. Mm -hmm. um, Council Coletta, did you want to speak on it before your light's on? For what? I'm sorry. Did you, wanna, did you want to stay where you are? Um, I, I think what I need to do is get a better sense from the administration what they um, what the salary might be, I think 120 is, is reasonable, and then increasing it based on uh, health care. Um, so why don't I pull this for now? I'll pull the amendment and just have more conversations. For I'll this make it easy for budget, everybody. you mean? Sorry? For this budget, you mean? Yeah. Okay. Uh, honestly, I feel like we're going to have more conversations in this process, so my friendly suggestion would be leave it in, pull it out of this fire lease purchase line at 120 mm -hmm. or 125, um, and then we have a conversation with the administration over the next week mm -hmm. about what makes sense. Yeah. Would be mine. Mm -hmm. But I do just, well, I did want to say on Councilor Lara's point, I, I would just stress almost every hearing we've had, obviously we've been frustrated by HR and hiring challenges and the need for the administration to do comp in class. I personally have a lot of confidence in Alex Lawrence, who's just sort of taken over that function. Mm -hmm. And so my, my gut feeling would be, let the Office of HR have what they need to transform that function in the city, because all these other functions that we care about are falling down. So that's just my gut. Yeah, that. absolutely. So I, I know I know very little about the human resource office, so that's I think that that's incredibly helpful, and I don't think that we've reached our limit for what Councillor Bach has identified as the unspent for BFD. So I'm fine with putting right. it 125 down there. Um, as it stands now, we have a, a, the proposed proposal of taking the amount of 125,000 from BFD lease purchase unused um, funds to go to parks for a full-time or contracted um, waterfront czar in East Boston. Please raise your hand. Thank you all. Yeah, thank yes. you the whole, <laughs> the whole <laughs> Thank you for the 125. It's a, okay. <laughs> it's a czar. The czar controls everything. I have no czar. idea what a czar is, but thank you. Now I, what is a czar again? Well, it's a Russian uh, king, yeah. basically, okay. but it's, it means someone in charge of the whole Claire? thing. hear that, Claire? Not German. <laughs> um, we're all set with that. Councilor Lujan, did you have a comment? When, for other people who propose FTEs, like I'm just going to put it on the record, we weren't we weren't doing that calculation of like other benefits. So I think it's fine if what is proposed right now is just their base salary. So that as a reason not to remove. Yeah, we were, I think you're right. Everybody was thinking that way. Um, Council Coletta, I have like a five hundred thousand dollar thing here with like no notes yeah. from you. I, I, I think I forgot to type in. Did you, if you forgot, that's okay. <laughs> Council Mejia, you're next. <laughs> no. <laughs> Council Coletta, do you, can I come back to you, please? Yeah, of course. Okay. Council Mejia, you ready? Yes. All righty. You go first. And then we go to Council Bach. All right. So um, a proposal of 2.5 million to go from YEE to YEE specifically creating a line item for the youth um, and college uh, academic partnership to create jobs to um, employ youth and college students, the college students providing tutoring, the high schoolers getting tutoring, to include also $500,000 in academic experiential, experiential learning. Um, you all, we all know what that is, right? Um, but this is all through, from YE to YE. Yeah. Um, so 
Chair, why don't we gonna we are adapting certain conversations that we had last week, and the chair recommended that the five hundred thousand dollars that I was looking um, to support exponential exponential learning by experience and getting paid for it, whatever that word is called, exponential, exponential. will fall under some advocacy work that she's doing. Um, we we. Us three, me, Rorel, and Anderson. So I would just like to uh, ask $500,000 of what they're proposing to fall underneath their line item. So that's the way that we're going to get to that point. Basically, that, that $3 million of the YE jobs for youth from YE to YE is consider is to create this program where they are hiring hiring um, high school students to be tutored um, while learning, um, so working while learning, and then also five hundred thousand dollars of that to be allocated toward experiential community learning. So you know, outdoor classroom, you know, learn by the beach, math by going to the science museum, whatever. Any comments, concerns, or questions? You like it? Aaron Lara. likes it. Uh, my question, my, my question mostly is that uh, it sounds programmatic, and wondering if, like, what the, um, I mean, I guess they'll just implement it if it's in the budget. Is that your mm -hmm. approach? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, let me just. It's not, it's like it, because we because the funding is there, so thinking, okay, if the funding is there, please implement it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we don't want to move the money. Um, can you please show your hands if you support it? Oh, Council, Council Clark? You sure? No, go ahead, my love. Say something. No, I was, I was, I was going to say that I think it makes sense in the context of I think I and I imagine Councillor Lara and many at the table would be concerned if you were taking money out of youth wages, but since the whole idea is just to pay youth, but then to sort of focus on the idea that more of our YE opportunities yeah. should involve this type of experiential learning, which I think YE has repeatedly acknowledged to us, you know, they were supposed to hire a like sort of workforce development um, analyst last year who never got hired precisely to try to make sure that it's really high quality opportunities that we're having. So I think this seems like in that line. So just wanted to say I supported it. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I think also um, Thank you. The, the hearing order the hearing order, um, hopefully with your support and um, help and brains, we can come up with ways to partner with colleges to get them to pay their students That's to right. partner with this program. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And next we have, for Mejia, sorry, I just need to highlight this. Um, next we have, from economic development to economic development, um, Council Mahir is proposing $100,000 to build capacity of a personnel that would provide technical assistance to, in order to give uh, immigrant-owned business business owners um, access to grants. So yeah, thank you, um, Chair. So just want to uh, that I really do appreciate my colleagues' feedback last week. I came in with I want a million dollars. You're like yeah my man, slow your roll, what that's gonna look like. So in speaking with you all, um, I have now reevaluated that ask and looking at a full 500,000 and it'll be broken down um, to two full-time staff. Um, and this will all be under the Office of Economic Empowerment instead of Moya, which is what initially we had proposed um, because we do know that uh, here in the city of Boston, we have a high number of immigrant businesses, but many of which struggle to navigate city services. So to allocate financial services and support to help immigrant-owned businesses navigate um, city services and opportunities is important. And then the rest of that funding will go towards providing grants um, and opportunities for technical assistance, um, helping them navigate, whether it's increasing their digital, you know, platform, maybe some legal support. But what we have come to learn is that immigrant businesses, it's not just a matter of putting out information and translation and that they all have access to it, is that we need to be able to 
oftentimes hold their hands through the entire process so that they can be set up for success. So that is why I am pushing for this particular line item in the budget to be amended. Um, can you please raise your hand if you support it? Uh, just $100,000 to for two staff uh, technical um, support staff, uh, linguistic appropriate technical assistance staff um, to provide access or to give access to immigrant um, business owners to access the grant of the amount of $400,000. Yes, so $100,000 to build capacity and personnel through staff, yep. and then yep. the 400 is for the grants for immigrant businesses. Yeah, I think I did a little bit of, um, I, I, I think the math was uh, 200,000 for staffing and $300,000 for capacity building. Do you, that is a different amount that I got. Yeah, I'm sorry, I think I. So you told me a total of 500,000? Yeah. And then I broke that down, 100 for building capacity for the staff, for personnel, and 400 for contracts. Okay. Well, I'm open to as for well. For the RFPs um, yeah. or grants, sorry. Lujan, I think. If, if we're talking about two people, that we sort of play with those numbers and make that 150 mm -hmm. for two, and then 350 for services. Yes. I just think we, should, we need to pay people more. Yeah, yeah. That sounds good to me. Uh, Council Lara? Just seconding that notion. I don't think that we should be paying anybody any less than $75,000. That should be like the bottom at City Hall if we want people to be living in Boston. So Thank you. Just seconding that. I, I wanted to... Um, Councilor Mejia? Yeah, I was originally saying two staff, 100000 each, um, but 150 for one... Is that... What 75 you, each? I think that's pretty good for technical assistance. Okay. Um, the 350 left. For grants and technical assistance and support. I think that's reasonable. Do we support that? Can we raise our hand? Okay. Council Bach, you have to stop texting and pay attention. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Spreadsheets on, <laughs> Spreadsheet's on your phone. I'm sorry. Go ahead, please, Council Bach. Just, sorry. I, I, th I think you mentioned that it was coming out of economic... Yeah, but can you just say again where that was pulling from? Economic to economic. Okay, economic to economic. Which, and is it? One, so 150 to create two um, linguistically appropriate technical systems. So with systems. those people, I guess what I'm asking is, are you pulling the 150 from personnel to personnel and the 350 from contractual to contractual? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can we raise our hands if you support it? Thank you. I only asked for, I want, I mean, thank you. And you know I want to know. Um, this is going to get harder now. Yes, Michelle, I see you there. Can you please um, make those addition, ed edits over here, too? Thank you, Attorney Goldberg. Um, all right, so next we have... From MOH to MOH, that we move um, or that we prioritize $500,000 for stipends for um, youth from the ages of 19 to 24 um, for um, supports for housing. The exact amount for each stipend is not specific. We haven't specified yet. Uh, Council Mejia, did you want to speak on this? Yes. All right, y'all. So we know that housing is a big deal. <laughs> and so uh, all we're asking for is for $500,000 um, to go towards supporting 19 to 24 year olds, specifically through stipends. Um, and I think what we're looking to ideally probably support um, at least 25% of their housing costs, assuming that the average rent right now is at 2,500, and that total will come out to be 600,000 for housing costs. So we're pushing for 500, assuming attrition and different in, house, in, in, in housing costs. So this one, 
I think about the fact that we keep talking about supporting young people and youth jobs, but the reality is that a lot of young people, when they graduate from high school and then have to live on their own, it becomes really difficult to stay here in the city of Boston. So I am advocating for a line item, a budget or amendment, or somewhere, somehow, that we can provide uh, an allocation of $500,000 to support youth housing uh, efforts. Looking forward to the discussion, figuring out how we can make it happen. Thank you, Council Mejia. Any suggestions or comments? Council Bach? And Councilor Mejia, is this the same item where you were anticipating that we might like particularly direct stipends towards young people who are like different city departments are working with already like SOAR and so, BCYF exactly. and all. Some, yeah. some of our most vulnerable, right? Like really being targeted um, so to some of our most vulnerable young people. Absolutely SOAR, um, even the Office of, uh, well, I know that the Office of Returning Citizens has a lot of advocacy in that front, but I also think about young people who are aging out of DYS and young people who are aging out of foster care. Um, and young people who are graduating with uh, a very limited career path and are struggling to make their ends meet. So we have a responsibility if we're really serious about reducing, um, I see this also as a prevention, you know, uh, advocacy effort here. We talk about public safety. You know, if young people have a place to live and they're set up for success, um, that I think that this $500,000 investment is worth every penny of it. Can we, did you have more to say? Oh, I was just gonna say, I think, I think that it's a good idea and that doing it on a referral basis, because obviously there's an infinite amount of need, but it just think we hear so much from city departments who work with young people who can't um, help them access housing because they need the resources. And, and I would just stress for the council's information that the federal dollars that we get on the housing side all generally say that youth have to be homeless in the sense of being certified, having been in a homeless shelter. So one of the challenges for a lot of our referring agencies is that you've got young people who are doubled up, they're sleeping mm -hmm. informally on couches and stuff, and so they're not eligible for a lot of those federal funds. Thank you for that. Thank you. Can we raise our hand if we support Council this? Lara has her hand and shoulders. Oh, sorry. Council Lara? Um, thank you. I'm fine with supporting the measure, and I'm also, cons I'm also thinking about some of the other amendments that folks made for housing vouchers and other and those kind of things and thinking I'm thinking in a policy sense are those things accessible to young people and if they're not then what do we need to change to make sure that a lot of the investments that we're making in housing now are accessible to right like I'm thinking I'm like oh the reason why we have to separate money specifically for this demographic is because the they money are, that we're already yeah. separating this they just don't have access to it yeah. and so thinking in a policy sense like how do we take what we already have and make sure that it's accessible for, for like um, young people who are. Um, Sounds like you guys are about to get some filing done. Councilor Murphy? Yes, I just wanted to applaud you for advocating for this vulnerable age group. And we have a lot of work to do to make sure that all of the issues that the other councilors have already raised about making sure that the resources we already have are getting to them, but I will be there with you for this work, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I just want to say thank you to everyone because this for me is personal and professional. And so, you know, I know it's, it's not a lot of money, it's not like millions of dollars, but like $500,000 for us to be able to invest and support a lot of the youth, that would be amazing. And the other thing that I want to it's say a great to- start. It's a good place to start, but to Council Lada's point, we created a new line item in the budget that, that that never existed, which was jobs for 19 to 24 year olds because we always focus on up to 18, but this vulnerable population always gets lost in all policy conversations. So I think that we have a responsibility and an opportunity to really, you know, lean into this age group and really set them up for success. So thank you. Thank you. Can we raise our hand if we support it? Thank you. And next we have a million dollars, same from MOH to MOH, um, allocating municipal workforce housing stipends. This one's gonna be a lot harder <laughs> because I know all of the discussions that we had, but this is one that I also think 
it would be really helpful to get some feedback from my colleagues of how we can make it happen. We have a lot of city employees here who are literally living below the poverty line and working for the city. And we have an opportunity to do right by them and help them, and we've seen it through the rental um, relief fund when we were in crisis, we we figured out the infrastructure to support people to be able to deal with their housing crisis. We've seen it through other programs that have been created here in the city of Boston. I do believe that there is a pathway to supporting our city employees um, with support on housing. We can't expect them to live here and work here if they can't afford to do that. So I am really pushing um, us to think about how we can make that happen here and set the precedent that we do care about our municipal employees and we're going to do whatever it takes to uh, help them be able to stay here. So looking forward to having the conversation and Council, suggestions. Thank you. Council Lara? Um, thank you, Madam Chair. So Council, I, I'm incredibly supportive of, of this measure. I think the thing that's coming up for me right now is that I've been we've been having conversations with a specific group specific at the Boston Public Health Commission, right? The mayor, Janie, convened this group that was basically having conversations about alternative um, to mental health responses that don't require like armed responses, right? So like instead of calling the Boston Police Department, we're gonna call uh, these folks. And so that working group has been working together and they are scheduled to have a recommendation for the mayor's office ready for September. And so we were having conversations about there's not money in the budget for that conversation or there's like a very small amount in the budget for that conversation because they don't have a recommendation ready now, which is when we're having the budget conversation. And I know that you also filed the hearing order to have this conversation. And so my suggestion is more about process. Like my suggestion is, do we have the hearing? Do we hear from the administration? Do we create a program, like a housing support program instead of asking for a million dollars that are gonna go, I mean, it's from MOH to MOH, but like suggesting the change from the um, mayor's office of housing to the mayor's office of housing for a program that doesn't exist and therefore the money might not be spent, like ha how it happened with the, with the other money that we've had in the line item. And so I'm, I will vote for it if we like, you know, if everybody collectively decides to like, yeah, we're gonna vote for it. But I think that it would be a missed opportunity to actually like fund an actual program that we create, we go through the hearing process with community members and say this is wh what the city needs to do to support housing for um, the employees of the city of Boston and then fully fund that instead of getting a million dollars um, that will or may or may not get spent because we don't have, we haven't had a hearing, we don't actually have a program of program support. So I will, I will vote for it, that's not like a vote against but more so like a suggestion of like do we wanna be, I'm, I'm more I so understand. saying that because I, I ask community members <laughs> to say, hey, we don't, you don't have a suggestion yet, let's wait until the next budget season. And so I wanna also be like conscious that if we're asking our constituents and people who are doing this work to do the same, that like, how do we manage that here when we don't have a specific proposal? I mean, I think that the question is, you know, can we spend it in the first year? Say the hearing happened and most likely we'll all support it and then we iron out the actual logistics. Mm -hmm. I think that million dollars for municipal support or staff support in housing will be spent in less than like six months. But yeah, that's just an opinion. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I mean, the program, the we idea so is that more. we would be paying out, that it would be like a, like a housing stipend for employees that work for the city of Boston. So let's be specific about that. Yeah. Okay. Council Mejia? I think it's better that we establish um, the funding and use the hearing to design a collaborative process of what that looks like, right? Because I think that oftentimes this whole notion of like, um, you gotta work with what you have until you have what you want, but sometimes what we need, we never get. So I think if we can secure the funding, then we could design what that looks like through the hearing. I think that that could be another way uh, to do it. Perhaps part of the process is the study for the need so that we can make the argument that a million dollars is way less than what we need. That's 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 my my argument. My argument is is it worth put you know like that we might not spend it because we had the same we had the same like we had the same conversation. We were like oh is it worth me adding an amendment for this thing for a million dollars because you're gonna have a proposal ready in September instead of like waiting until next budget season and actually having the budget ask reflect the proposal that's coming. Oh, so, so you're saying to do to 
ask for an amount to do the study to identify what the need is and then ask for it next year? If, I think that that, I, that I, I feel saying? like that would come out of the hearing. She, right? does, she doesn't want to miss an opportunity of like people, anyone saying a million dollars, so that's it. So next year we do that too. Like okay, she, so it's the need is greater. The, okay, so then anyone I know here? that Bach is itching to, I'd like to hear what Bach has to say. Councilor Bach? Yeah, I, I just, I think where I am with Councilor Lara on this is that I think it's one thing when we all sit here saying MOH to MOH. I think that if we actually had on the table all of the existing housing programs mm -hmm. that are wrapped up inside that MOH line, mm -hmm. and we were saying, hey, I want to take a 1,000 out of this established program that creates units, in many cases for people of even lower average income than, this resident, than the workers of the city of Boston, not to say that we shouldn't have a program, but as just a kind of instinctive thing, I get very nervous about that because I just feel like all of those programs are really robust and substantial. So uh, like, I, I kind of feel similarly, and I, I know I said this in the last working session, it seems to me like anything that's gonna seriously address municipal worker housing needs. I mean, first of all, Councillor louis Jen already said this in the last working session, but a significant piece of this puzzle is what councillors have referred to, which is the fact that salaries have to be higher, yeah. right? I mean, that's the easiest way to give somebody a housing stipend is to pay them more money um, and we're the employer. And then I think like a housing program is gonna have to be specifically and narrowly tailored. We have 18,000 employees, so it's gonna have to be some, and I think what I hear Councillor Mejia really talking about are our our lowest paid employees who are working these multiple jobs, right? So there is a tailoring intention. I just really, I really don't want to take money out of current operating affordable housing programs and sort of like hold it while we figure out what this one is. So I just want to say that I, I, I co I'm comfortable with us chasing the idea, but I'm not comfortable with shifting I guess a million get today. Get where you can get it, huh? Oh. Yeah. So, Councillor Lujan. So what I was going to say, like this could also be a conversation that we have in ARPA. Get ARPA where you can get it. Yeah. Well, Sorry. Just, <laughs> no. I don't can we that. can we move to uh, support or non? Well, could I you, just another? Question? Go ahead, Frank. Yeah. So a couple um, of things, and Council I. Council Mejia. Oh. Sorry. Go ahead, Chair. <laughs> <laughs> Council Baker. Like, there's a lot of housing proposals here, and it's like a million here, a million there. It'd be nice if we could see them all together. I think this may be what you were trying to speak to, and in a way that we, I think, and this may be off topic, that we help that city worker is to provide grants to buy homes, you know, and not have it be, because the more we put people in rentals that we're, that, that we're supporting them in, that increases our budget out over time if we're supporting them on the front end for, for housing. And again, to get back to what, are, what in all these dollars, all this paperwork, what are we building? Where are the units we're building with this money? So just a couple comments. I'm going to support. Look, my hand it's still up. Thank just you. Just going to support, okay? Oh, thank you, thank you. But I think we need to figure out all of the housing things because it got stopped by an advocate yesterday that we increased the voucher to 7.5. That wasn't enough for them. They want 10 now, right. so. Yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. Um, if we can get one or two final comments, Councilor Arroyo, then it's Councilor. One, which, which I think could be helpful. The 18,000 city employees that we have, not all of them have residential restrict like requirements, right? So if this was uh, specifically for folks who are working a certain amount of hours for the city and have residential requirements, I think we can narrowly tailor it in a way where we're reaching the folks that we want. But I also would piggyback with Councilor Louis Jen that paying people more money is the, and Councilor Bach is the best way to, to really to get go. after this. All right, so then. Councillor Mejia. Yeah, so first of all, like my heart is like beating here really fast because Baker is in support of this. Okay. Okay, I just am so enamored by this moment. I just want to soak it all in. Okay, but I'm not going to. Um, and so I really do appreciate all of my colleagues' uh, feedback. I, to be honest with you, I just want to make it better for our most vulnerable city employees who have dedicated their lives to the city. And I've actually met, even on dot day, I came across two employees who one is still working here and the other one said, she said, I can't afford to live here I'm, anymore, so I had to leave working for the city. So I think we're all on the same and, page. And so, yeah, no, no, I hear that, but I do believe that we, 
that we we need to come to some sort of like either we use the million to increase pay or we use the million to help support some of the housing All right, thank initiatives. You. Thank you, Councilor Mejia. I'm sorry, we just, I'm looking at time and now my heart's beating. So um, can we get a vote, a, I mean a support, uh, raise our hands if we support it, raise our hands if we don't support it and we're gonna wait until we have the session so we can discuss increase of pay or voucher program or whatever. So raise your hand first if you support it. That's it, it's done. Thank you. That's why we didn't need all the fluff. Um, great segue. Two hundred and uh, two hundred and sorry, not two hundred. Two point five million dollars recommended uh, for city housing vouchers from Council Bach, Council Lujan, and Council Worrell. But. Uh, this is to go to MOH from partially BPD and partially BFD. And Council Bach, you have the floor first to explain exact line items where it's coming from. Yeah, sure. So thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and uh, yeah, if folks go, there, there's a second sheet that went out that's sort of the same thing as before, but for BPD, um, it's smaller. So I'm sorry for folks with dip, eyesight difficulty. Um, but. Uh, Basically, um, the proposal here is to take, uh, so again, if you go under the miscellaneous equipment line, I think mm -hmm. that's, no, sorry, it's not miscellaneous equipment. It's the lease purchase line, again, on police. For police, uh, okay. Yeah, so the police, police pur uh, lease purchase line, which is 55400 there. Mm -hmm. um, if, you, if you go across, what you see is that, similarly, this is being dramatically underspent this year. They'd spent a million by mid-April, leaving more than three million in it, um, which even if you, so basically we project that it's gonna have um, quite a lot, like three million uh, left in it um, at the kind of spend rate. So my proposal was to take 1.7 million out of this, um, which would still leave basically the ability for the run rate to double because I looked back at it historically and it was higher last year, but it was still not as high as they've budgeted for. So basically you take 1.7 out of here. And then if you go back on the fire spreadsheet that I gave everybody, um, uh, you get the other 400s out of extra in the, um, uh, in the miscellaneous, equipment line for fire, which is that last line at the bottom, uh, and then, um, or maybe not the last line, yeah it is, okay. And then um, and then another 400 out of the, uh, I think that's repairs and services to equipment line. Sorry, having trouble matching them here. But basically, so the idea is you're taking um, 800 out of fire and 1.7 out of police, again, trying to use places where we've got this big padding in the line item um, to pay for the 2.5. And then just the thing I'll say, and I know other counselors will talk about the merits of this, but like, uh, as Councillor Baker referenced, there is a lot of interest on the advocate side um, in increasing the housing voucher program from, it, it's been at five, the mayor proposes to increase it to 7.5, this would increase it to 10. I just wanna stress that I think as we've been talking about other housing interests that this council has, um, whether it's returning citizens or um, like, home ownership vouchers or um, the ability to do more like project-based vouchers in IDP units and stuff. The nice thing about the city voucher program is it has this flexibility that the state and federal doesn't. So it seems like an area where there's an opportunity to solve a lot of the challenges we're facing creatively by increasing this line item and, and I would love to see that happen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, Council Bach, can you give me the breakdown for the line items in BFD? lined up here so I think it's uh, did you say actually madam chair do you mind just do you mind just give me a second do you mind just going to somebody else while I just pull this because I think oh it's because I've sorry I've got the BPD matching with the fire which is why it's off all right now I'm not but was it 400 and 400 so it's 400 yeah Thank so you. so it's 400 and 400 out of fire I think it was lines 
five two seven hundred and uh, five five nine zero zero, and out of on the fire side, and then on BPD, it's the lease purchase line, which is five five four zero hundred. But Madam Chair, I'm happy to. Type one this is up. miscellaneous equipment. Yeah. Um, sorry, I missed the other one. Uh, the other one is um, repairs and service to equipment. Thank you. Okay, um, can we raise our hand if we support yes. it? Oh, sure, Councillor. If the police, if what is the lease purchase? Like, what are they buying under the lease purchase? Um, if it's down, what do you say? It's down two point seven. Yeah. So their so their approved budgets up at for lease purchase is up at four point three. Um, sorry, I've got too many sheets here. Uh, but um, but they had about three million unspent. So honestly, it's so low, Councillor Baker, that I assume this has to be non-automobile stuff for them, just because, as you know, they have a lot of cars. Yeah. So I, I can't imagine that this line is related to their cars. So, but also, if this is going to be a continuing mm -hmm. line in our budget, <clears throat> and and it's coming out of lease purchase, purchase this year, where does it come out of next year? Do we need to we need to sit here and figure out next year where the two point five is coming from? Well, I think from? I think my point is more our default presumption as a council is that lease purchase costs are roughly like consistent over time. So, with the unless the administration comes to us and says we want to lease purchase a bunch of like new types of stuff, right? Like they did with the washing machines, you know, and so they need to increase this. So my view is they've been under on lease purchase this year and the year prior. Like, I think they just have too much default budgeted in the lease purchase line. And so the, the ongoing thing would be that we would just reduce this lease purchase line, increase the voucher line. That's the net net zero. And then if they want to make a case for why they actually need a re-increase of a lease purchase line, that's a further conversation. But I don't think we just, I mean, leave this much money, which is more than many departments have overall and as a kind of default pad. And have you gone back? In previous years, where that lease purchase was, was it around the four million, like say, three or four years ago? I think three or four years ago it was, but the last few it hasn't been. And we've left money on the table in there. Yeah, we've used it to help pay for it over time. Thank you. Yeah, can we please raise our hand if we support this in whole? Oh, Councilor, are you supporting it or you want to speak? Sorry. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, only two seconds. I just, with the permission of the folks who submitted this amendment, it's an amendment that um, we kind of got ourselves whipped into, but I didn't submit it because Councillor Bach was already doing this, so why would I do the extra work? So with the permission of all of you, I would like to put my name <laughs> as included in this amendment because we were like, I was like, can you figure out where to get this? So I just want to add, I want to support it, but I also want to um, have, I want to include it as the four names of people that submitted it, if that's okay with them. Obviously, we're voting on one amendment, but I just want to make sure that folks know that our office is supporting it. Thank you. Thank you, because they showed up to my office. If, you want, if you want your name included, send me an email of a list of everything. I will put it on record. Okay? Um, okay, so, we ready? Raise your hands if you support it in full. Thank you. Moving on, Council Braden. I think there's something else for Council Bach. The Hokies, Public Works, etc. Here we go. Um, exciting stuff and waste reduction. Don't forget that. Yes, and waste reduction. Okay, let's go. And open streets. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> um, the, yeah. Uh, so, but I think. It's people might have my amendment in front of them, but it actually got modified in the conversation. I think with the with the whole group. So I don't know, Madam Chair, if you have the updated number on that. Five hundred sixty-five thousand. Okay. Was that including though my waste reduction people, or is that just for Hokies? Separate. Let's just talk about Hokies for now. Okay. Um. So I think that was basically a collapse, right, of a whole bunch of different people's Hokies. Yes. Every, this is, this is a everyone. 
And we added two for District um, 3. Everyone supports it. We just want to uh, be on the same page on where it's coming from. Yeah, so that would be the last thing that I would suggest coming out of um, uh, fire lease purchase. Let me just make sure that still adds up. For the waste reduction, um, to be clear, it's one hundred and seventy-eight thousand and six hundred eighteen dollars. Sorry, say that again. It's how much? Um, waste reduction, one hundred and seventy-eight thousand. One hundred seventy-eight thousand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so, um, yeah, so I guess I'd recommend taking the, um, and Madam Chair, I'm happy to reconcile notes with you afterwards, if that's Okay, helpful. that's no um, problem. But I think I'd probably take the, um, the R565 as the last thing out of that fire lease purchase line, and then the 178 out of this police lease purchase line, just because we've sort of used the extra in fire. Mm -hmm. Can we, anyone has any comments or? All right, if, if are any objections? Okay, moving forward. I literally, like I, I know we're doing this and we, I'm, you know, just to remind you that um, you don't actually have to be here for the rest of this because we've reached nine votes, but I just want to go on record and make sure that we all, all are on the same page um, so that it's, it's, we know what exactly what everyone is proposing. Um, and the other thing is, um, to the Mission Hill link, um, and Council Bach, I was suggesting that we increase that to 75,000 to reach uh, Roxbury, to extend it to Roxbury. Well, we already, we just changed the route to run all the way to Ruggles. Oh, did you? We just did that, yeah. No but worries. we do need, but we do, I would say the 75 would be good because basically what's going on right now is we need a bit of a bump just to pay for the current service, but the seniors would really like it to run more often, and for that we need some more, so. Okay, please, um, can you expand on, expound on um, the, where you're taking it from? The um, decrease. Yeah, where, where, did we, where did we end up putting? Um, we we have talking. it on lease purchase agreement still, I mean lease purchase um, still in BFD. Okay, I think probably we should move that over to lease purchase BPD. Okay. Just based on how we loaded other things on fire. Understood. Um, and yeah, and just for people's reference, I said this in the um, working session on Thursday, but uh, the Mission Hill link, it's partially subsidized by the T, partially subsidized by local um, hospitals, mainly the New England Baptist. Um, and it's a shuttle that basically gets, um, like mo it's, it's not exclusively for seniors, anyone can ride the link, but it is largely our senior and disabled population in Mission Maine and Alice Taylor, and it gets them up the hill to the hospital and the grocery store. Um, and so it's a it's a really vital last mile service for a very steep kind of grade. And uh, the city of Boston has recently been supporting. We adjusted the um, we adjusted the route in order to get it all the way to Ruggles for folks. Um, and uh, the city just made its first ever city bus stop signs for the Mission Hill Link. Um, but it is running into challenges with inflation in terms of paying the bills. I just wanted to um, say that, of, of course, I'm in support of it, but I, considering that Nubian Square is sort of a central location for folks um, in a lot of senior housing, um, at least two or three in Nubian Square, one coming and two now there, um, it would make sense that if they're exchanging or activities, there's going to be a lot of art activation and community programming. Um, it'd be nice if we can have that conversation about extending it to Nubian Square. Yeah, I think, I think we should have that conversation in the future, yeah. Okay, um, there you go. All right, moving on. Councillor uh, Worrell, there is a um, proposal for $125,000 for home ownership voucher program. Um, 
and this is intra department um, MOH to MOH. Councilor Raul, would you like to? Yeah, this is a um, very small investment into promoting home ownership here in the city of Boston. Um, it's going to be being able to help five families, um, going to be asking for five families on operating and another fa five families through OPA, and it will be giving $25,000 per year. Um, BHA gave a proposal that said that we will be able to increase a family's buying power by $125,000 by giving them a home ownership voucher, which creates a real opportunity for families to buy here in Boston. A um, lot of money going into rentals to suggest the first initial investment to see if this home ownership voucher program can help keep people into the city of Boston uh, and help you know increase that $8 medium income or net worth that you know black 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 residents are are tagged with now. So this is just trying to push home ownership, increasing the net worth of black families and brown families here in the city of Boston. Yes, Councillor Baker. Hi, and so is that a, um, is that a, like a monthly rental voucher that can go towards home ownership? So if, if the voucher is two thousand, the thousand goes towards home ownership. Yes. Yes, that's the thought. And how do they identify the five families? Um, so it's going to be based on income, and we're working out the application process now. Yeah, so they need to be able to, at some point, right. be able to afford something. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what we're looking at between 50 and, I believe, 70% or 80% AMI, AMI right now. Right. Can they use that outside the city? Um, we're working on the application now. Um, yeah. my, my push would try to make sure that we're spending city dollars inside of the city. Inside yeah. the city, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Councilor Bach? Yeah, and I just wanted to add for Councilor Baker that this came about in the context of the conversation about, um, obviously we've also talked about this proposal in ARPA hearings and about like a much more substantial amount of yeah. money going into this like on the ARPA side, but I think Councilor Royal was making the point of wanting like to do some foothold in the yeah, budget. Yeah. yeah. Right. right. Councilor Mejia? Oh, oh. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> We're going for yes? Thank you. Um, do you have a second sponsor on this? This, this was a file, right? This was a... Yeah, this was um, Bach and Flaherty. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you. And next, we have $50,000 suggestion to go to ESL classes, um, contractual to go to, M I'm sorry, Moya um, from BPD BAT. Councilor Braden, do you want to talk about that? Madam Chair, um, in our work with the Alston Brighton Adult Education Coalition, it uh, became obvious last year that the very low level, entry level, beginning English classes were not being funded through monies from workforce development or whatever. So uh, this money will be um, uh, sent, sent through um, English for New Bostonians to support uh, English language classes for new beginners in. Um, in all, in specifically, we have we have we have a couple of programs in Alston Brighton that are really going well, and there's a wait, there's a long wait list for for places um, in in those programs. And I appreciate your encouragement to increase the amount. Thank you. I used to teach ESL. It's not easy. Hmm? <laughs> um, anyone? Uh, any other suggestions or comments or concerns? Can we support it? Yep. Okay. And next we have. Oh yes, uh, Councillor. Is it in the essence of time? Is it possible that we do we have to speak to each of our line item amendments, or no? Can we just yes. raise our hand? All right, thank you. Yes. You only. Sp no, we don't. Even, I don't even need any of you here. <laughs> Where's my crown? No I'm kidding. <laughs> No, I just. We, don't need the nine to be we already got the nine. Okay, okay. I'm just ask. I'm just creating a democratic process so that everyone understands that we are in this together. We don't change our minds and 
do something else. We're in this together. You're hearing it. You know we're on the same page. There's a little bit left. We could just go raise a hand. Or if you have objections, that's the only time we stop. Is that, is that cool? That sounds good. There's a little bit left. What do you mean? A little bit left. Like 10 more suggestions. And we're just going to show our hands. Just show our hands. Or light, light up your mic if you want to object. OK. Um, let's go. $150,000 to go to African culture festivals or parades, um, tourism to tourism. They don't have anything allocated to African or Cape Verdean or anything in tourism. Thank you. This is where I'm going to get you guys, no sir. <laughs> <laughs> this is where, pay attention. <laughs> um, where is it? Where is it? The one that I care about. $600,000 to increase pay for the council admin staff. Let's go. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> so from to council administration personnel, obviously, um, same from overtime, BTD, BPD overtime. This is another, this is the last one, I promise. Is 600,000 a lot? How many, what do we have for staff? We, it's not a lot. It's actual, the calculation that they have actually done to actually come up to fair pay. So this is not a random number, guys. No, not our staff. Like the council staff. administrative yeah. central staff. We already, they're not our staff. Yeah, but it's central staff and then your own staff. Are you asking, is it yes, your yes. staff in your office? Or? Not in your office, but central staff. For the people who yes. Help support our work. That's right. They're Michelle's staff now. Okay. Um, <laughs> Um, this means that we have to support them in raising their pay, even if it means that they get paid more than us. Okay? <laughs> All right. Uh, that's it. Oh, my gosh. So, thank you. Oh, Michelle. Yay, Michelle. getting a raise. All right. Hey, Chantel, don't play with us. <laughs> Let's not fight about this. <laughs> And then um, we have special events for LGBTQ. Um, I wanted to come from historic preservation to go to LGBTQ, $150,000 yeah. only. Special events to LGBTQ. Yes, ma'am? I'm concerned about it coming from historic preservation because that department landmarks, et cetera, has been understaffed for years and they have a backlog of a whole lot of studies that need to be done to try and um, preserve some of our historic, even just the Highland Park neighborhood, that sort of stuff takes a lot of time and we're way behind. So I'm, I really wish we could find some money somewhere else, not, okay. from, not from the historic preservation. Okay. Do we... Yes, suggestions? What was the what was the original I don't remember this amendment from the from the thing. What was the original suggestion from like where to take it from? I don't remember. I had all my stuff come from BPD overtime. Oh, I we can know. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we now, don't now wanna, I'm saying no. We don't want to fight. <laughs> I think enough. I, I think don't want I didn't want to fight with Council Lara, so all right. Um, let's table that. Let's keep going. We said we're gonna keep going. Um, so age strong to age strong, and I think it probably goes to like um, ISD or Public Works, I don't know, but to um, allocate 500,000 to the Senior Repair Program. This is the program that gives out um, grants to, for seniors of lower income to repair their homes. This is, yes. Home Center? Boston Home Center? Mm -hmm. What department is that? It's under uh, Mayor's Office of Housing. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, you want to increase their budget by 500,000? 
So then I would just say suggest that it's it's interdepartment. I wouldn't take it from So it's like down. a it's like a hey MOH, can you fund more of this? Please. Okay. Yeah. All right. Moving on. And the uh, the seniors everywhere thanks you. Um in Boston. RFP to for smart from the start. They usually get money from BCYF. This is BCYF prioritizing um, and keep making sure that they continue to get their grant. I know they've contacted every single one of us. Yes. Um, do we support $500,000 to go to SMART from the start? No. How much do you support? I, I got the call from them and I've had conversations with them, but we all deprioritize that in our office. I just think that we are funding the things that are my priorities and you could get to nine votes without me <laughs> because but I just, I don't think it's a good use of our funds. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm objecting, but we have our nine votes, so I'm just letting, I'm just saying, I'm only stating my opinion, but we, you can put it there, if you have where to have, where it comes from. If the nine vote remains, are you gonna be like, no, I'm not gonna veto, I'm not gonna override the veto? No, no, absolutely not, okay. absolutely not. I just don't know where we're gonna get that money from. I like. So are you saying add to BCYF to get that money, not BCYF to prioritize that money? Why are they not getting the grant? Um, they are, they just need a little bit more. And a little bit more is 500,000? They are, usually get 250. Uh-huh, and they are asking for, did they, they get 250 last year? Yes. And they're getting the 250 the year before that? Yes. And they're asking for 750? It never now? gets increased, it never goes yeah. up. Do you, would you suggest 350? Uh, yeah. Thank you. We good now? Yeah. Um, council, uh, acquisition for Natural Wild, I'm gonna need a little help with this, um, from Parks to Parks. Acquisition from Natural Wild for Parks to Parks, do we have an issue with that? Council Orell? Right, so right now, um, the Parks Department has a policy where you have to have two public entrances to make it considered a natural wild or a park. Um, in order to maintain some of the tree canopy, um, especially in my district, there's some natural wild that doesn't have two public entrances. Um, so this would just, the city being able to say, we could purchase natural wild and just have it be natural wild without making it a public park. Yes? Okay. Yeah. Council Bach, do you have a no? Is that, no, is that a financial thing or is that just a policy change? So they don't have um, th the money to purchase it either. Like, so there's no bucket of money to, to purchase, you know, so it's, it's both, it so, is both. And, and sorry, how much is the amount? 350. That we're talking about, okay. Been like open space. Am I? Am I? In your committee about a specific piece of open space that you're having hearing on. That's Thursday. why. That is probably exactly yeah. what is what I'm thinking about. Thank you. Okay. I was like, wait a second. Are we not buying something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are. I will add your name to it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> wait. Wasn't that my idea? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the translator. Um. Property management, oh, I'm sorry, to, from property management uh, personnel to go to economic development contractual graffiti busters only because they're having a hard time hiring and economic opportunity can contract it. Do we have an issue with that? $52,000. EFD themselves can contract it. Right, but don't we want it in the contractual services line for PFD, yeah. not for the amendment? I remember it being in the same in the, in the same department, not we, going. It will not get administered mm -hmm. if economic inclusion is sitting with this fifty thousand. Like yeah. So where do we want to put it? Oh, it should PFD. be in public. Yeah, public facilities. Yeah, so it should it should be in PFD contractual services. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then where is it pulling from? Um, it's pulling from property management because they can't hire there. Well, they have no oh, hard time. Oh, we're moving it out of 
Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean post facilities. I meant property management. And I don't know if we want to take it from them. We were trying to add it to them. They were okay. They were okay with it. They can't find people. They're saying well, it's Well, no, but they're trying. They're trying to hire still for those positions. So they've got six positions for graffiti busters, but they currently only have three people hired, and they're still trying to hire for the other three. And I'm not sure we want to reduce because they're crews of two. So if we reduce that by one, they wouldn't have a complete third crew if they do manage to hire. So I think our thought was to put the fifty thousand in for contractual services in the same department. No, from a like to take it from somewhere else so that they would have a new fifty thousand that they could do contractual services in it's the going meantime. Going to BFD, while they hire. where's it coming from? Yeah, so uh, to PMD. Sorry, that was my mistake. It's property management. Um, uh, Madam Chair, if you table it for a minute, I will find somewhere. <laughs> we know you will. So it's okay. <laughs> fifty thousand, and I and while I'm and I will also find. Um, I think. I, want to, I think I missed these, but I think there might be one or two things where the proposal was to take them from the Office of Historic Preservation. I, I wanted to I deleted it. I was waiting for you, for you to come back. Okay. All right. Just because I, I want to stress we've only just gotten them to be their own office, and they're still quite... Mm -hmm. But there's friendly. so many LGBTQ events that goes on unsupported, especially mm -hmm. for trans, black, trans uh, LGBTQ communities in uh, disenfranchised communities. Totally, which is why I think there are other places that we could find it more easily than a small new department. Okay, thank you. We'll come back to that. Um, graffiti busters, we'll come back to that. LGBTQ special events, we'll come back to that. Um, okay, so I am asking for you guys to allocate, or for us to allocate $100,000 for the life insurance for four, four people um, in the city of Boston, just a study uh, from Boston Public Health Commission to go to economic opportunity. I'm open for suggestions. Uh, Sounds fine. Thank you. Yes? Oh, good. Thank you. Um, next, Ms. Um, Council Collado, let me know when you're ready. Oh, okay. Please uh, tell me because I didn't take notes properly on yours. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Uh, so I am introducing uh, two additional amendments. The first one, I'm gonna start with- No, Coletta, no Council oh, Coletta, no. I didn't take notes properly. I didn't, oh. <laughs> okay, go ahead. What? <laughs> What's going on? All um, right, go ahead. <laughs> so $100,000 uh, for Moya, and this, particularly the program of immigrants lead Boston. It's a 12-week civic engagement course for immigrant residents to become leaders and advocates in their own communities. Uh, I spoke to now outgoing director uh, Vali about this program. They do incredible work. They provide a stipend for people in their community or folks in their own communities to go out and advocate to elected leaders. I would like to see an expansion of this program to have more individuals. I guess there is um, there's a wait list for it. Uh, and a bunch of people want to, to get a part of it. So I am proposing $100,000 to this, um, to Immigrants Lead Boston under Moya. And I was not here for the hearing for public works, although the snow removal budget looks pretty large. Don't touch the snow removal. What? <laughs> Don't what? touch it. Do not go into the light. <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> Help me find it from somewhere else. Though. You see how light <laughs> blinks right away. Please. Did she say snow removal? You want all the seniors to call us right now? <laughs> I said snow removal. Yeah, I did. I did. Like, what? What is going on? <laughs> Are we going to do with the snow removal? <laughs> Was it really that bad? I, it was great in East Boston, Charleston, and the North End, everybody. Oh, good to know. <laughs> no. Um, yes, um, which one? Council R? No, I have no minute. suggestions. I just okay. I can't come from snow removal. <laughs> okay, not snow removal. It was $100,000. What's the second one, please? Yeah, Council right. Buck is on it. Okay. I, mean, I just need numbers. And also, what was, your, the, what was the number you were searching for for LGBTQ event? 150. Okay. And that was, sorry, 100 for what? 100 for Immigrants Lead Boston. Okay, great for under me. Under Moya. What's the second one, Council Colada? 
Okay, so the second one is gonna be uh, larger. This is uh, Boston 311 reform. So my goal is to completely modernize the system. Uh, it would be, I believe I, at $300,000. Um, I would hope to modernize the system, provide better accountability and transparency, potentially higher quality compliance positions uh, that act as ombuds people for residents. Um, it, right now, this system is a call center, it's a web app, it's a mobile app, all in run. And my understanding is that they're using a CRM system that was developed during, during the Menino era in 2011. Something needs to happen with this system and it needs to be modernized. I think we can all agree on that. $300,000 is my proposal. Where and, do you want it to come from? Uh, let's have a conversation. All right, we'll come back. Um, Councillor Braden is, is asking for um, professional services for ordinances, um, charter, and to go to city clerk contractual services, $200,000 to come from I thought that um, a and contractual looks pretty handsome. Shh, decreasing. Um, I think it came from the law department. Uh, no, no, that's a personnel issue. So hang on, hang on. Let a contractual support. Hang on a sec, hang on. Um, from a and yes. Yeah. You're correct. Wrong, wrong page. Yeah, that's uh, Jim and all. <laughs> it's um, two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. To go to city clerk contractual services mm -hmm. from A and F contractual services. Yeah. And this is a project that it should have been should be done every ten years. We haven't done it in fifty, so we're catching up. Okay, no issues. We're moving on. Oh, for Councillor Coletta. Coletta, okay. Um, go back to Councillor Coletta. What's the suggestion? Um, and I know that we talked a little bit about the Boston Police Department personnel, but they are increasing their mobile officers by 10. And if you remove one EFT out of the 741,000, you might be able to do that, and they still would increase by nine from FY22. I don't know if you're okay with that, but. For, for which? Mobile okay. officers. Mobile officers. Um, I don't know. I think you don't want to do that. I, yeah, I want to keep it. Okay. Personnel. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yep. <laughs> thank you for the suggestion. No, that's fine. I think I don't think you want to do that. I don't think you should do that. Sorry, I suggested it. <laughs> I have too many papers in front of me right now. What's what? that? It's inside of. What budget? Which oh volume? Anyone? Sorry. What are you looking for specifically? The Office of Neighborhood Services. Yeah. I just I know they're putting more money into the three one one stuff, so I was trying to find the number. The three one one. Yeah, I think if they're already, I think we should have think an about increase of just one hundred and nineteen. Yeah. Sorry. One hundred nineteen. One page one nineteen. No, no, no. The increase is one hundred nineteen thousand. Okay. Question is if this is a one-off sort of um, upgrade of software or whatever um, reform, would would some ARPA funds be appropriated for this project? For yeah. three one, or could is be. it considered a capital expenditure? Could yeah, it could be considered. It could be well, not some of what she wants. Because if we're talking about equity, though, there's five million in that. Personnel. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there, isn't there five million suggested for to then measure equity, whether or not the spending is well, equitable? Yeah. Are you talking about digital? She's equity? talking about ARPA. Yeah. Um, this could be considered under digital equity. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's five million suggestion for equity in order to do that properly. Mm -hmm. So give people access. Three one one could fall under that, but that's just. Yeah, it could, it could, it could, quite honestly. Maybe an elegant place to find some. <laughs> yeah, or maybe. Did you say it was an elegant place to find some? some? Okay. 
but maybe there's a, maybe we can put some amount in on budget. For, I mean, you would need personnel <coughs> yeah, to, to help with this onboarding process because you need to create a whole system, you need to create another, you need to keep the system and then integrate them at some point is what I'm being told by people smarter than me when it comes to software. So we would need to hire them. Yeah, and well. I think the software. So are we asking do it. Being paid. Wait, are we asking do it to do something? Because then shouldn't it come from do it to do it? No, because we're adding. We're adding. We're adding things. We're asking them to do. So we're. It needs to increase. Yeah, they do need. They do need more. Yeah. Do um, it needs yeah. more money. The yeah. to do this additional thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would. It would be do it. They need but more capacity. Do it is getting yeah. a big increase in applications. Right. Shouldn't we just make a recommendation in there? Well, so they're already, this is what I'm trying to say, they are they already have in the budget the replacement of the legacy through in one system, like from a pure software perspective. I think yeah. what Councillor Coletta is suggesting is more of the kind of like... Also programmatic? Complementary, yeah, programmatic apparatus around it to yeah. make it more robust. Then that's not 300000 Well, so I didn't know about the software upgrade. So, I mean, that would be a bulk of it. And then potentially doing a an independent sort of compliance yeah. officer, ombudsperson, because time and time again, we see that cases are closed. We ask why, we can't get an answer. So maybe I amend that down for two staff members. We said nothing less than 75. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we put it in at 150. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay, so where is it coming from? So I think I'm still chasing, so basically, but just to double check, we're <laughs> chasing places for 150 for 311, 100 for immigrants lead Boston, 150 for LGBTQ events, and 52 for um, property management grants. Is there anything else that's outstanding on the table right now, Madam Chair? Um, You mean, I'm sorry, I was reading something else. I'm sorry, say that again. So, <laughs> nobody's still missing. I'm trying, so currently trying to find sources mm -hmm. for $452,000, and I'm just asking if there's anything else on the, so I have 150 for the three on one thing, taking into account the upgrade that they're already embarked on, the 100 for Immigrants Lead Boston, the 150 for the That's LGBTQ it. events, and then the 52 for the property management. Graffiti grants. Uh, Councillor Braden is going to need help with um, a couple of places. Well, I think wasn't that it was probably for Coletta Wilson. Was there anything else under? No. Under under Braden Pending, besides no. graffiti. No. no, no. There's more. And um, those my 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 late suggestions. Yes. I have. I ha I think I've got that myself. Okay, great. So yes, uh, that's it, Councillor Block. Madam Chair. Yes. I just wanted to um, oh. let you know that it is 420, so I have to excuse myself because I have to get my kid. <laughs> okay. Um, but that I trust Councillor Bach and the remaining members of the body to make decisions about where it comes from. Um, the remaining things are just some of Braden's thing. And Braden's stuff is very. I'm supportive of all of Councillor Braden's amendments. Yeah, it's always very yeah. moderate. And yeah. then, um, yeah, that's it. So. Okay. Thank you very much. I will read the committee report before our meeting tomorrow and come ready to vote. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. We did it. We did it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, uh, Councillor uh, Bach, I'm waiting for the recommendations. Oh, we have one thing, though, um, that I just have to read that's different. Um, Councillor Flynn, although this sounds like a, a capital thing, it can also be done as a priority from streets to streets to fix sidewalk re for sidewalk repairs, um, and he'll work with the department to um, talk about where those priorities. Chief Yasha and them is in, and and Council Flynn are in conversation and is willing to prioritize that. But um, it's just a matter of like following up. This is instead of requesting the million dollars to be moved from Vision Zero from capital to right. the operating budget. Which he's, is he's instead working with Chief of Streets to prioritize them. Precisely. Yes. <laughs> it's, I think it's for like, a it's district two district. focused lens is what it sounds like. I it's, don't know. I just want to make sure, you know, the, the, the lens equitable is, lens. Cause right. I'm also okay if it's district two. <laughs> the lens is district two. You. Let me type that in. Um, but yeah, that's just in department. 
And Councillor Braden, while that's happening, I'm just gonna read the rest and remaining of your things. Um, senior programming for uh, Veronica Smith Center in Brighton. Fifth Brighton, it's an age strong. Um, I was either taken over from BCYF to age strong. Other other districts, their BCYF run their senior center. We don't have, we don't do that. So um, I don't know which bucket will come out of, but that's a broad brush. I can't find. Can we take it from BPHC? BPHC. Public health. Um, if if they are if, if they're flush, yes, take it from somewhere. They have a lot of bar but it is it, it is um, programming. It's health and wellness, and I think it's would, that wouldn't be inappropriate either. It's just fifty thousand. Yeah, I'm sure if they're already if they're already doing it, it would make it easier. Um, Jackson Man closure transitional two hundred thousand to do what? Uh, the two thousand uh, was to do a uh, have a, a transitional transitional transition coordinator and resources the bcyf center the jackson man center is the only one we have it's going to close this time next year uh, all of the programs that happen there and there are a lot will need to be relocated to other other facilities within and we may need to rent space we may need to um you know it's it's esol adult education senior Recreational services, summer program, childcare, FEMA emergency heating and cooling centre, and it's an election precinct for five district, five precincts. So, um, I'm thinking that has to come within BC, BCYF to BC, uh, BCYF, but I want it to be made a priority within their within their own budget. Okay. Um, does anyone have any suggestions or concerns? That's fine. Okay. Um, ja where is it coming from? I'm sorry. It's going to be transferred within BCYF, I, I would imagine. Okay. And next we have youth workers for BHA, $120,000 to go from YEE to BCYF. I think it might be a combination of coming from both those buckets. Uh, this is a non this this um, these youth workers. We have the two two BHA facilities, um, Commonwealth Development and the the um, Faneuil Gardens have a large population of young people. We don't have any youth workers. We have youth workers now that we we got some funding from the state from, but it's not it's not a permanent line item that we have to sort of go back and beg for every year. So. Um, there's a definite need to try and uh, keep our young people um, out of trouble and to provide them with um, with youth youth worker support. So um, I was thinking um, BCY a combination of BCYF and YEE perhaps would Got be it. done. Um, I split it in half, and it's both going to BCYF for the youth workers for BHA and. Um, if, if, is, is this something that already exists or will let It doesn't you? exist at the moment. We used to have youth workers, but they were taken away several years ago. Commonwealth Development and Faneuil Hall Gardens in Brighton. Yes. Um, okay, I have that detail. Any objections to those? Okay. And last but not least, um, hire early literacy specialist, $80,000 to uh, Boston Public Library. Yeah, this would be um, an eighty thousand dollar for to really uh, focus on early uh, early early literacy specialist. Um, it would be a citywide um, resource, and it would be just earmarked within the the P BPL's existing budget to elevate the importance of early literacy as a way to build le learning pr reading proficiency going forward, so that our kids, when they hit third grade, are better prepared. Okay. Thank you. Um, and you got my two crossing guards for Winship and uh, Baldwin. Let me just check. <laughs> wow. Um, I was just asking if she got my crossing guards. 
Now, would it be within BPD, Boston Police Department, crossing guards for those two schools? It's BPD budget. Okay, um, sorry, Council Braden, I do not have it. What is the total of that? Uh, I think um, we put it down as um, 80,000 altogether, t um, two crossing guards for, one for the Winship and one for the Baldwin um, School. Oh, sorry, Council Braden, I found it. We already addressed it. Okay, right, just wanted, didn't want to miss that because I get asked about it all the time. Thank you. Um, okay, all set. Oh, and I have a question. Yes? Yes. About something else. Oh, um, one second, sorry. Okay. Um, okay, yes? I have a, a, a favor to ask you. Mm -hmm. I want to add something. What? That I didn't think about, but I've been talking about it. How much is it? It's not like a million dollars. No. Or 500,000. No. What is it? It's 160. What is it for? It's for the Boston Public Health Commission to support the Youth Development Network. I've been talking about it in the upper. What is that? It's the Boston um, Youth Development Network. They provide case management, support services to our most vulnerable schools and students who are chronically absent. Isn't, is that into the uh, department? Or? Yes, so I'm just asking for the Boston Public Health Commission to get an increase of $160,000 to support the staff for the Youth Development Network. And I do not have a budget line item where it could come from. I did talk about it during the opera hearing because these folks are the, one of the least paid within the Boston Public Health Commission, but the caseload that they have is tremendous. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna get any money out of the opera funding conversation, so I just. I think that could be in the department because they did get money for um, specific to case managers for um, like um, high risk uh, populations. But I, it's the Youth Development Network. It was a line item that was created under Menino. Is this contractual then? Is no, this, it's for staff. It lives in BPHC? It lives in B, Boston Public Health Commission under the Youth Development Network line. It is a line item that historically never moves up, but the need does. And so what I'm advocating for is an additional bump at the very least of 160 so that they can address some of their hiring um, barriers, which is the pay rates. So it's to, uh, is, is it to increase pay? Yes. Okay. It's for a bump. A, yeah, it's for like a, a bump. Okay. 20%, I think, I don't know, something like that. I was speaking to somebody smart about the numbers, you, but I don't know how to get it to. But can, you, can you get back to me? Can you find out what that increase is? Um, Councillor uh, Bach and I briefly discussed it. I, I, think, Bach? I think, Madam Chair, that um, she's seeking a, she thinks there are eight FTEs and that she's seeking a $20,000 increase for each of them. So it would be a, that would be 160. Um, obviously your discretion on, but I, and I think obviously we would just have to add it to the special appropriation for BPHC and sort of specify the intent for it to go there. Um, but it, it is an operating budget item, so they're posted in the schools, but they're BPHC employees. So I do think it's an appropriate thing to chase in the operating budget. Got it, thank you. All set. Thank you. Thank you. Um, back to sidewalk repair. We have that and uh, Coletta stuff. I was not working on sidewalk repair, um, but uh, I think we can put No, that was my, me thinking aloud, sorry. Okay, yeah, so um, I think we can add another 100 for Immigrants Lead Boston from um, the... Another 100, so increase it to no, 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 this is, I'm going through the, okay. the things that I was finding sources for. So I think we could probably do another 100 um, for the Immigrants Lead Boston thing out of the that BPD comms line item that I talked about before. 
because um, we left spa space in that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think uh, probably do the the 352 and this 160 for Councillor Mejia out of the BPD lease purchase number because again there's significant room there and then I just think it's you know I think the reality is that the administration may come back to us and say you're cutting that too close to what we actually need and then we'll have that conversation but that seems like the place to put it for now is it BPD lease purchase yeah the BPD lease purchase thank you and then back to Coletta's 311 uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. That was I was putting that in there too. It's putting Coletta's three one one is one fifty. Comms or lease purchase. In lease purchase. Thank you. Immigrants lead Boston in comms. Yes. Then the hundred fifty for the LGBTQ thing in lease purchase. And the fifty two for PMD also in lease purchase. So those three together roll up to three fifty two more in lease purchase. And then I think probably Councillor. Um, Mejia's 160 could go there as well. Got it. Thank you. Um, okay, what about the Graffiti Busters property? Yeah, yeah. I was including that, sorry, in the lease purchase. That was also. the 52. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're actually done. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Well, some of us are. <laughs> you should get an extra $5,000 for that. Okay, <laughs> Julia, you just took an extra one hundred and sixty. dollars Okay, Councillor Mejia, don't turn your mic on. <laughs> I, okay, for the record, I think Councillor Mejia was saying let's um, <laughs> amend um, more funds for the community. Um, to be clear, not we should get extra five thousand dollars. So can we? Um, all right. Well, I like to thank all of you, especially the three of you that stayed behind, Councillor um, Bach. Thank you so much for becoming my vice, even though you rejected that position um, <laughs> so apparently. Uh, but here we are, and I appreciate you for. Um, your studious and always astute response and um, technical assistance in these processes. Um, and both of you for hanging in here with us and your uh, beautiful, innovative ideas and in your work. Um, we look forward to tomorrow to a beautiful presentation and uh, heartwarming comments. Um, thank you for the administration, to the administration and um, to opening up their doors to, from here forth to working together in um, creating this collaborative effort of participatory budget. Um, if you have any closing remarks, I'll take them down. Also, me here. A clarifying question. We have presentations to prepare for tomorrow? No, 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 I'm, I, I do. Oh, okay. but I like, oh my God, I've got, I got to do presentations I do, tomorrow. but, <laughs> Council Bar? I, but I would suggest, Councilor Mejia, um, we will be taking the initial vote on the budget with the amendment tomorrow. We have to, or else the administration's budget goes into effect. <laughs> and um, I do think that most likely counselors will tomorrow, as they have in the past, give sort of like speeches on things that they are excited and not excited about vis-a-vis -vis budget in advance of their vote. I would anticipate that happening. So that's, that would be your opportunity. Tomorrow will be your opportunity take strong stance, just your statements, typical, like whatever, what, like we do in other council meetings, where you say, you know what, I support this, and although I wasn't too strong on this, okay. but I'm happy about this process, and. Okay. Thanks to the chair. Thanks to the chair. Okay. <laughs> that kind of thing. When will our conversation, or will there not be one on BPS budget? Will we just go into a vote tomorrow on that? We're going to a vote tomorrow on that. Okay. Oh. Take your position, make your, sta it. make your statements. Prepare yeah. your statements. I have it, yeah. Ooh, okay. And, and the capital same thing for well. capital? Yep. Revolving, yep. All three tomorrow. Yep. OPEB, yep. yep. OPEB? There's another one? No, <laughs> no OPEB, not OPEB. OPEB. Don't, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's I important. Look at that one. Who, no, I, OPEB's the other post-employment benefits. It's that fund to pay for the employee, for the retiree health care. We all just, we, we all need, support it. We need that. We all Jacob support. has you covered. Don't you yeah. worry. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good with that. Um, any other remarks? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um,
Yeah, go ahead. I can go offline after the. Just thank you, Madam Chair, for convening this process. Thank you so much. Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you.